This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by iFixit, the free online repair manual for everything. Before you start your next build or fix, head over to iFixit.com slash twit to snag the fully loaded Pro Tech Toolkit for only $59.95. And check out their array of high quality parts, tools, and guides. Today on Know How, programming for our LED clock. It's a Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I am Father Robert Ballas here. I'm Brian Burnett. And for the next however many minutes it takes, we are going to crack open your knowledge jar and fill it with knowledge cookies. That's right. So I hope you <laughs> you haven't filled it too far with cookies so far. And I hope they're not fattening and calorie ridden. Uh, you know, yeah. that, that knowledge bomb hurts my head. Some metaphors don't work well. <laughs> well, you know, that's okay because I'm glad we're working on a clock project because yes. we can keep track of how much knowledge or how long it takes to get that much knowledge into a cookie jar. Indeed. Now, remember last week we took a look at the first part of our LED clock. And the whole idea is to take some of the knowledge that we've gained over the last couple of months, mm -hmm. including how to use an RTC and how to use WS2812 strips right. and uh, our 3D design in order to make something that was a little bit fun. Now, it's not super useful, but we're going to make something fantastic. Oh, if you go to the overhead, this, this is actually one of the prototypes that I had for the LED clock. That's why we're using it for the coding example. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the stand. I've actually taken off the, the little stanchions on the side. Okay, so, so this would stand up on, like, right, this so, if it was? Right, it, normally it would, it would be inside the stand. Uh, because I yeah, see. It, okay. it would free, free float, basically. Mm -hmm. But this is identical to the uh, to the setup that we had in the full featured finished product. I see. Yes, yes. but right. this this will allow us to more easily see what's going on with this. Totally. What we need to do though is we're, we're this is like a coding 101 episode. We promise this every once in a while. This is coding heavy. So did you say coding 101 episode? Oh, how about that? Ooh. I'm drinking some green tea out of it Fortuitous. too. I miss that no, show. coding 101 was never about the green tea man. No, it wasn't. But. If it, I'm glad it lives on in know-how now. <laughs> now. Now, the reason why we're doing this is when we ended Coding 101, we told you that we were going to do code-heavy experiments here on know-how. Now, if you're not into this, if you don't really want to know how to code, you can still do this project because I'm giving you all of my finished code. All you have to do is download it and then upload it into your finished clock. But if you want to make tweaks, if mm -hmm. you want to change the UI, if you want to see how I did some of the various functions that went into the LED clock, this is the show you want to watch. Cool. Well, let's dig into it. Let's dig indeed. Okay, so we've done RTC projects before. Right. First time we did it was with the Groduino. The Groduino, the uh, with the LCD, the liquid crystal display. The liquid display, crystal display with, with a networking adapter pushing networking time adapter. over the network. Yeah. And then the um, I can't think of, OLED display too. Correct. You also did, Correct. Yeah. So this is something that we've we've played with, something that we should know how to do. And what I've done is I've created a sketch that includes most of the code that you've already seen, Alex. If mm -hmm. you go to here, what I've done is I've got two libraries, including Wire.h. And remember, Wire.h is the library that allows us to use I squared C devices because our, our real time clock is an R squared C device. Right. Okay. I don't actually need the fast LED library here. That's a, that's for a, a later piece where we're actually going to start doing the clock functions. Cool. I just left it in here. And then this, this is the address for the I squared C device itself. So again, zero by 68. Remember, as mm -hmm. long as the devices use different addresses, I can stack I squared C devices on top of each other. Yeah, in basically daisy chained. Right, right. <laughs> now, here we're going to uh, start our serial console. Uh, I mean, sorry, we're starting our I squared C, and then here we're starting our serial console. And the reason why we're doing this is because uh, this example is not about getting time onto the LEDs. This example is about showing you what's going on inside the Arduino. Okay. All right, now, so let's, let's look at what we've had. Again, you've seen this before. 
If you go back to the previous examples that we've given you, you should be able to, to recognize and this code. And if you haven't, that's an opportunity for yep. you to go to twit.tv slash kh and download the old episodes. Very well done, Hippo. It's almost like I've had to say it at the end of the show, huh. but I'll save the rest of it for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got two functions here really quickly. These are our conversion functions that go from a decimal to binary, binary to decimal. And that's mm -hmm. required for us to read the times. Here is my set time function. Uh, this is going to become important. You're going to see why in just a bit. So it allows me to set the time on the real-time clock. You may, right. may remember that most of the time when you receive a new RTC, it won't have a time on it, mm -hmm. or the battery will have died, and you need to reset the time. This is how you do it. You just put time in the format of, uh, what is it, like hours, minutes, uh, seconds, day, day of week. Right. Uh, year. So th is there any way to add a function for it to go to the internet and fetch any of that information? Yes, there is, Brian. But oh. we're not going to do that in this project okay. because just curious. You, you do remember when we used network shields on our Arduinos, it was kind of slow. Yes, it was slow. Yeah, we, right. we don't, and it does use up a lot of system resources, so... Mm -hmm. eh, mm. Yeah, yeah it's just another element we don't need right now. Right. And, and actually, what I would do, rather than, than using a uh, Ethernet shield, mm -hmm. I would get a GPS module and I would just get the time from satellites. That's oh. far more accurate. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. a future project then. Future project. Cool. Okay, so this next one is display time. This is going to allow us to see what time is set on the real-time clock on the board by sending it to the serial console. So this is going to, all this is going to do is it's going to read the time from our RTC. Then it is going to print the hour, the minute, the second, the day of month, the month, and the year. Okay. See, so that's that's what all that code does. Very logical. Right, and then the day of the week. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Those are those are case statements. Case statements are fun because when it asks for the day of week, it doesn't receive Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday from the from the real time clock. The real yeah. time clock only stores values, mm -hmm. only uh, 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 numbers. Numeric values. So yeah. one to set or zero to six is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then this converts that number into in, back into a, the day. Into text. That yeah. makes sense. Actually, it's not 0 to 6, 1 to 7. There we go. All right, so our loop, super small down here. Uh, all it is is it calls the function display time, mm -hmm. which is the function that calls out to the real-time clock and says, hey, what time is it? And then displays all the data. Perfect. Okay, and it, it waits 100 millisecond and then does it again. So if I did this right, I should be able to open my serial monitor, and what we'll see here is this. Nice. So obviously the, the clock has not been set. This is, this is a fresh and clear clock. It's not year zero? It's, or this, <laughs> uh, this says one? it's six, uh, no, this is midnight, 18 minutes, 21 seconds, one one the zero, the year zero day of week is Sunday. Well, this is a Sunday. It's, it, yeah, okay. It's a little off. We it's might have to set a this. tiny bit off. Fraction. I think the battery in that is dead as well. So oh. okay, but this this is how the RTC function works. This is what the entire project is based on. That's how our clock is going to know what time it is. Once we have the the clock set properly, we should be able to recall that uh, that value as right. often as With, we need. Without having to make any adjustments. Right, yeah. right. Oh, uh, the other thing to remember about this is um, I'm actually going to write a, a library. Right now, every time we do an RTC project... Have we done that before? I, I have, but oh. we haven't done it on know-how. So I, I need to teach them how to write a library before I actually write the library. That's kind of cool, though. Yeah. I like that. But what we want is rather than us having to put these functions in every single time we do an RTC project, I want them to be able to put like, in, like up top, mm -hmm. include know-how clock. Yeah, and, and then, then it'll fetch that. Yeah, all those functions will be in there, and I just call them rather than having to put them in the code every time. Uh, that's like the next progression in our programming Indeed. knowledge, Indeed. right? Indeed. Like, yeah, that's pretty neat. And that's this is actually where most people get. If you if you start developing long enough, you start making your own personal libraries of the yeah. functions that you use most often. Okay. Just because you're tired of having to copy and paste it over <laughs> and over again. <laughs> right. And yeah, save space uh, and complexity inside the code there. Right. I mean, who wouldn't want to have their sketch? This all this stuff. I mean, imagine I can remove everything from there. So. I would include that. Mm -hmm. All of this would be removed until I get to that. 
Yeah. I mean, that's kind of nice. Uh, yeah, replaced with the function, yeah. Just cool. with the function. Oh, just with the call to the library. The call to the library, yeah. right. All right, so what we're going to do is we're now going to build on this. This is, what, this is how we do coding projects. Mm -hmm. You've seen this code, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to actually set the time, Brian. All right. So let's, let's Physically, just, right? Physically Without... set the time. So here we go. We've got a new example here. Oh, well, look at that. I'm going to have to increase my, my size so you all can see this. That's right. There we go. Either that or Bam. freeze frame what you see and then blow it up in Photoshop on your own time. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. Now, this has gotten a little bit more complicated. Again, I've got the fast LED library in here. I don't actually need it mm -hmm. uh, because I'm not going to use it yet. For later. But I've added a couple of things. So define button pin one, button pin two, button pin three. Mm -hmm. And I've set it for two, three, and four. So one is two, two is three, and three is yeah. four. And, and you remember this. Uh, remember, when I, when I put buttons or any sort of device onto my Arduino that mm -hmm. can move from pin to pin to pin, I like to set the definition up top because it means when I go back, because I, actually I had put this code away for quite a while. Mm -hmm. When I go back, this tells me, oh, that's right, I've got three buttons. And it's set for two, three, four. And if I want to change that, I don't have to hunt through the code to find all the places where I have assigned pins two, oh, oh, yo, two, three, and four. Right. I just change it up here, and it changes throughout the entire code. Yes, that saves you a lot of time in the future. Yeah, yeah. The next set is this. These are global variables, and you're going to find out why they have to be global in just a bit. This, every time I read the state of the button, is it on or is it off, I need a place to put it. More right. importantly, I need, to be, I need a place to put it that all the functions in my program can read. Okay. If, if it's only in one function, then when that function terminates and hands off to the next one, it that won't. value goes away. That makes sense. Right. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm saying, no, store this for everyone. It's at the right. top. It's a global variable. Yeah, it's basically like saving the file and then allowing other users to right. have access to it. Precisely. Yeah. Now, I'm doing this because this is an embedded project. It's not connected to the internet. Uh, otherwise, I do not do global variables. <laughs> I, I pass variables because yeah. that gives you much more control. You know exactly which functions are getting which values. Okay. That's good. Global and internet connected, bad. bad. <laughs> Super bad. Because you don't have control over the variables that well, the change of the variable to the, then the function. Precisely. If someone else manages to find out where those variables are stored in memory, <laughs> and they can overwrite those variables, yeah. they can now d make my program do something it's not supposed to do. <laughs> Which is interesting in its own right, yeah. but well, not something we have to worry about, I guess, with this project. I wish I had to do that in the future. Okay, and that's cool. that's actually part of like security research. Security researchers do that all the time. They okay. always just try to sort of say, okay, what happens if I overload this? Yeah. What happens if I overwrite this piece of memory? <laughs> all right, so next thing, let's look at the setup. Uh, so setup is the same. I'm turning on my I squared C so I can access my real-time clock. I'm turning on the serial console so I can see what's going on. Uh, now I've added these. Remember, I always want to set the pin mode. Now, you can most times you can get away without doing this, mm -hmm. and it, or do, the sketch will kind of figure out what we're, you're doing. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm using these three buttons, which means those pins need to be input. Okay. Because you can be input or output, not both. Right. Right. So uh, what? And remember, because I defined it up top, I bu defined button pin one as two, mm -hmm. two is three, and three Threes. is four. It means what this is actually saying is pin mode on pin number two mm -hmm. is input, pin mode on pin number three is input, pin mode on pin number four is input. Right. Okay. So that's that's my setup. You've already seen this. These are the functions we've covered before. This is my uh, binary to decimal, decimal to binary functions. You've seen this before. This allows me to set the time. I'm going to need that now because this is the function that allows me to tell the RTC to replace the value it has mm. with the value I'm going to give it. So what I have to do is I have to give it seconds, minutes, mm -hmm. hours, day of week, day of month, month and year, or some subset of that in order for it to overwrite. Okay. Okay. Now, Read DS2313231 uh, uh, time. This, this is the function you will use most often because this is the one that actually looks at the real-time clock and pulls down seconds, minutes, hours, days of week, days of month, month and year. Okay. Every time I read it, it's going to pull all those values from the RTC. Okay. All right. Display time. Uh, this is the one that allows me to push it out to the serial console. We've seen that before. Mm -hmm. Now we've added a new function, 
mode set time. Hmm. All right, so what mode set time is going to do is it's going to allow me to change the value of the time and then push it back to the RTC when I'm done. Okay. okay. Uh, but but let's, let's look how it actually does that. We, we have to start with the loop. So down in the loop, remember the loop is the, the, the part of the code that's just going to keep going over and over again. Keep checking. Keep checking. So it's going to keep running the instructions inside the loop. At some point, the instructions inside that loop need to bring it to the functions of the program. Otherwise, those functions never run. Right. Okay. In this particular case, it's going to wait. This is first going to read button state one. So it's going to read button one mm -hmm. by doing a digital read on pin number two, because remember, we, we define that up top. Right. If, if that is high, in other words, if I have pushed it, right. then it's going to do mode set time. That's the function I have up top. Mm -hmm. okay. Otherwise, else it won't do anything. It won't do anything. It will just, it, what it will do is it will read the button. If the button is not pushed, it will display the time on the serial console, and then it will wait 100 milliseconds. Right. And it will keep doing that for infinity until mm -hmm. I push the button. Once I do push the button, here's a little something something that's important. Uh, you, you should really design this into your programs. You'll notice I have another while statement here. So if I've pushed the button, if, if the mode is now high, yeah. it's called this function called mode set time. Right. The very first instruction in mode set time is while the button state is high. So while that button is pressed, just keep reading that pin until it's no longer pressed. Okay. You see that? So in other words, uh, let's say I push the button. And you hold it down. And I hold it down. What this is going to do is it's going to say, oh, it's still high. And then the instruction, in, in, as long as it's high, this while loop will keep running. And the mm -hmm. only instruction in the while loop is keep reading the button. So in other words, keep reading the button until it's low. When it's right. low, then stop doing this while loop. Instead of registering it as like thousand, yeah, yeah, exactly. This this is what this is kind of tricky. People are going to start making their own menu system, and you're going to notice like sometimes it will skip a couple of of, uh, of modes. Yeah, and that's because what's happening is every time that delay comes across, and remember it's only a hundred millisecond delay. Every right. time it comes across, it's going to register another high, and it thinks it's another button push. It thinks it's another button push. Right. But what this will do is it sticks it. Mm -hmm. So if you push and hold the button. It will just stick in that while loop, right? And you, could, I guess, you could probably program something it, to do something if you, yeah. if, if button is held for this many seconds, do something else that normally would precisely. Wouldn't. And and you can start doing that, but what you'd have to do is you have to read the the RTC yeah. and say how many seconds has it been holding this thing, right? Like I um, want it to be ten seconds before it does anything. Yeah. Precisely, or uh, like I could have it write to the serial console, let go of the button, <laughs> <laughs> or I could have it like light up one light, yeah. saying, yeah, I'm. I'm I'm waiting. Good. Yeah. We, the hardest want, button, the want button. To like that go, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So once it's done, so now I'm in the function. What it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and create the variables byte or second, minute, hour, day of week, day of month, month, and year. So those are, those are variables, little mm -hmm. spaces of memory. The next function is going to read the RTC mm -hmm. and then fill up second, minute, hour, day of week, day of month, month, and year, mm -hmm. okay? But this, and this is important, it's only gonna do it once. So it's gonna, whatever the time is at the moment that this function is initialized, it will pull that in and that's the time I'm gonna work with. Right. So it's not gonna constantly update. Right, that makes sense. Right. Now, while the button is low, so in other words, while I am not, I have not pushed that button again, it's going to look at button state one, button state two, button state three. In other words, it's look at all the buttons. Are any of the buttons pushed? Mm -hmm. uh, that while loop means as long as I don't press that first button again, stay inside this loop. Okay. But it's also checking buttons two and buttons three. And buttons two and three can do different things. In this particular case, if I press button two, then hour equals hour plus one. So the hour, the value for the hour that I pulled down from the RTC, it's going to add one to it. I see. So yeah, that's you're setting the time. You're incrementing. Right. Yeah. But Brian, take a look at this. We mm -hmm. talked about this before when we, we talked about <laughs> checking ranges. What am uh, I doing here? You are checking that if it goes to 20, well, it says if hour is greater than 23, revert to zero. So you're not going to get the 25th hour, the Correct. 26th hour. R yeah. Remember, this is important. This should, be, this should be a blanket statement for all of your programming. 
always put something to check range. Right. If I didn't have this here, I could be our 400. <laughs> it would just keep make sense. going. Yeah. Right, it would make sense. And and then when I would go to write that to the real-time clock, the real-time clock would go, uh, um, I, no, sorry. stop yeah. that. You're, you're stupid. <laughs> you're a bad person. Precisely. But, you know, and also, this is, this is what we're used to. I mean, think about those simple clocks, like the one that you have in your car. Mm -hmm. When you press hour, and you get to hour 23 or hour 11, right. or, uh, or hour 12, when you press it again, you don't, you don't go to an invalid hour, it no. goes back over. It goes back over, and I guess you could, if you're doing 12 hour increments, you could then set, um, you could do like, now display AM, now display yep. PM, and f rotate, like if AM, flip to PM. Yeah, cool. in this particular case though, because it's a 24 hour clock, yeah, we, don't we, don't, we don't do AM or PM, mm -hmm. we just do, you know, 10 times or two, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That makes sense. All right, but we also have button three, so that's the hour. Button three, if I push button three, it sets the minute, mm -hmm. and it's the same thing. Minute <laughs> equals minute plus one, and no, yeah, not not sixty-one minutes, not sixty-two <laughs> minutes. Right, and actually, not sixty minutes. Not sixty because yeah. there is no sixty minutes. Sixty minutes is hour. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay, and then what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and print that, and then it's going to wait three hundred milliseconds. Uh, and now here's a fun thing. So all of this, this is the end of the while statement. It will keep doing this as long as I do not press button one. Mm. The second I press button one, because that's what this is, right? Right. So when button one is no longer low, when I press it, when it becomes high, high. what's going to happen is it will now take the value I just modified and it update will, it. It will push it to the RTC. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's. So let's go ahead and upload this code. Oh wait, did I? Oh, I do that. Uh, yeah. Now, do you have to sanitize for or be concerned if someone's pushing multiple buttons at once? Like if somebody pushes two buttons, if it gets that read of not high, high? really, because yeah. it's not a multi-threaded device. It uh, does okay. one thing at a time. That's, okay. that's the thing about Arduino. It it's just basic. does a instruction. If okay. that instruction makes it wait, it waits until that instruction is over. Okay. Yeah. All right, so it's done uploading. Let's go ahead and open up the serial console. So what I should see is okay. This is this is my time. See, it's just mm -hmm. updating and updating and updating. Which and that's is because wrong. It's, right now it's just in the loop, right? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and push the first button. Is that this one? That far one. Yeah. That, that one. That one. First button press. There we go. So now I'm inside the loop. Right. I'm inside that function, and what it's doing is it's just it's updating over and over again, but it's not changing because I haven't changed anything yet. I see. So, so push that second button. There you now go. So now I'm changing and keep going, keep going. One, so two, three. Ah, that's cool. All right. And uh, I'm assuming everyone knows how to wire buttons because we've done it like 50 times on Know How. Yeah. And if so you haven't, go, go to ahead and go to 24 hours, Brian. Slash <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess I should, huh? See what happens when I get to... Mm -hmm. will, it, will it flip over? And 15. see, what's happening is the reason why it's doing this, it's, it's, kinda, it's because it's writing to the serial console. I should have given it more recovery time, but I didn't because this is just a demonstration. Yeah, because I'm hitting the button like really quick, and sometimes it doesn't register. Yeah, you, you, you actually it's better to press an and. There Boop. we go. So zero. that's what we wanted. So it do, you don't have 24 hours and two minutes. You get zero hours. Yeah. Okay. So should I set the real time? Let me go ahead and set the real time. Let's. See. All right, we got a little ways so, to go uh, here. So, well, oh, because we're, we're in a time machine right now. Yes, and it's, it's definitely 20, you're 2008. <laughs> How is that possible? <laughs> well, just make 20. You're 2033. There we go. Okay. Now, push the first button again, because according to our code, if you that push that button, set it, and it then we should set should it see and see the date and time and stuff, right? Oh, press and hold it. Oh, whoops, sorry. Boop. There you go. Yep. And now it's going back to its... Oh, oh it, it flipped oh. over again. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Because I, I actually didn't put the, uh, the button check. On this. For the, that makes sense. See? Okay. See, and that's, that's why you want that. So yeah. that you don't get that thing of it keeps switching back and forth. That's if why you, you need test users. <laughs> if you hold down that button, all it will do is keep switching back between back and the forth. loop and the function, the loop and the function. Not so great. Yeah, I have a habit of breaking things. You that's know, there's good. a few systems in place here at Twit for because of the mistakes I've made. <laughs> I know about those. <laughs> okay, so that gives us the ability to set the time. Which is great, but now, Brian, what we need to do is we need to be able to, uh, to display the time on our LEDs. That's gonna make LED it purdy. Let's make this thing purdy. But we're gonna do that right after these messages. If you don't mind, I want to interrupt Know How briefly with uh, our, a word from our sponsor and a perfect sponsor for Know How It Is. I Fix It. You know about I Fix It. 
I fix it uh, has for years had a, a simple goal to to make it possible for you to repair the stuff you own, despite sometimes interference from other companies, <laughs> companies that don't want you to fix your phone or your tablet or your computer. I fix it puts together the the information you need, the parts you need, and the tools you need, so you can take stuff apart and put stuff back together and fix stuff. They're constantly putting their teardowns up. We've you've seen them many times on our shows. I love that and repair videos. When a new device comes out, the Galaxy S8 came out. When the new iPhone comes out, when the Nintendo Switch came out, when the new uh, Notes Note 8 comes out in a couple of weeks, I fix it. Will be there first in line to get it, take it apart, find out what makes it tick. And it's not just because it's kind of fun to look inside, although it is, but because they want to know what the parts are in there so they can help you repair it yourself. They're also leading the charge in the electronics repairs tools industry with their iconic blue and black ProTech toolkit. We like it so much. And there was always in the house, you know, where's the where's the ProTech toolkit? So Lisa bought a couple more. We now have three in the house. It's so useful. I have one in my office. We have one in the kitchen. We have one in the uh, the pantry because we're using using it all the time. To you can even fix a Happy Meal. They've got the t they've got the the t the tip to fix a Happy Meal. Uh, it's sleek. It's compact, but it has everything in it. Enough steel bits, high quality steel bits and tools to handle any repair or mod you want to throw at them. And it's very well priced. $59.95. Take a look at it. The tool roll makes it very easy to store. It's compact. And uh, this is my favorite part, the 64-bit driver kit. This 64 different bits, and they're all designed around DIY repair. And like I said, there's a bit for McDonald's Happy Meals. There's the pentalobes that Apple uses, the Torx that Apple uses. You, I have yet to find something I cannot take apart with the kits from iFixit. Oh, and by the way, that protective case keeps everything organized. I am one of those people who just, you know, forgets to put stuff back. But these magnetic tips, they slot right into the handle. Makes it very easy to put it back after you're done. So we always have everything. Open it up and flip, flip it over. Notice something. Yep, the bits won't fall out. It's held in place by a magnetic mat. And by the way, here's a pro tip. That doubles as a great place to hold little screws and components as you take them out so you don't lose them. I love the swivel top magnetic precision driver. That's all it takes. Just a magnet. When you put the tip in there, it holds it solid, but it's easy to remove. And a flex extension. See that? Also magnetic, so that makes it easy to get around corners, hard to reach screws. They've got spudgers in there. They've got picks, plastic opening tools, a suction cup with a nice, the new handle makes it very easy. You need it, believe it or not, to like all these all-in-ones like the iMac, you need a suction cup to remove the display assemblies. The very famous iFix's own rubber-handled Jimmy Pry tool and set of metal spudgers as seen on YouTube on iFixit teardowns. The ESD safe tweezers, the ESD safety strap so you don't destroy your job with static shock. And, of course, iFixit tools are backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty. By the way, you don't need to buy something to get iFixit's free repair resources. That's all online at iFixit.com, including 25,000 free repair guides. I-F-I-X-I-T.com slash twit to tackle your next hack, fix, or build. Get the ProTech Toolkit. And, by the way, a great gift for anybody in your life who has to fix things it is well you know when the kids moved out i gave them a toolkit right now i'm thinking i'm going to put that next time I, i'm going to put that protect toolkit in there as well so they can not only hammer a nail they can fix their phones ifixit.com slash twit we're going to get you a fully loaded protect toolkit for just 59.95 ifixit.com slash twit we thank them for supporting know how now back to the boys and we are back. Okay, so mm -hmm. we now know how to read the time. Right. We know how to use buttons to set the time. Because previously, remember, what we had to do was we had to go into the, the actual programming code and, then, and reset it. Now yeah. we can do it out in the real world. That's good. Yeah. But right now, the only thing that we can do with this Arduino is we can display the time to the serial console. Which is kind of boring. Kind of boring. <laughs> not, not as useful as having it on this. Now, remember, this, if you go to the overhead, this is a string of 60 LEDs, which will probably be seconds, right? Now, <laughs> Makes sense. And then we have minutes down below, mm -hmm. and then we have hours up top. So 
nine minutes because mm -hmm. the 10th minute goes over to here. So this yep. is minutes times one, this is minutes times 10. Mm -hmm. This is hours times one, this is hours times 10. Right. And you'll notice that's why how many lights we have because- Boom. Yeah. Uh, one thing, this was a design consideration. I originally was gonna have this with five lights, but it didn't <laughs> look right. I mean, there, there that's- There are four lights. <laughs> That sixth light will never light up until it does the animation pattern. Oh, okay. But there will okay. never be 60 minutes. It will no. just tick over to hour. It, yeah, you, you had the space, might as well fill it up, right. make well, it symmetrical. I did the, the early design, I did it with five, and it just looked weird. It just didn't look it, right. Yeah. Okay. And then so with this print and this uh, this translucence, this looks really sharp. I like it. Yeah, it, this, is, this is just a clear PLA. Uh, it's a diffuser, so what happens is it, it kind of mutes the light, yeah. it just makes it a little easier to look at. It's but, neat. Yeah, yeah. All right, let, let's go and take a look at the code. Whoa, okay, we've, we've kind of exploded. Now oh we do God. need this fast LED library because we're gonna be as accessing WS2812 LEDs. Again, we are, we are defining where you can find our RTC. This is all the stuff for our buttons, so we're defining where you can find our buttons. Now we, oh, look at this, Brian, what's what? this? Min offset, min 10 offset, hour offset, hour 10 offset. What is this madness? Okay, so here's what it does. Remember, uh, a WS2812 is a string, a string right. of LEDs. They're all linked, they're daisy chained, right? Right. Which means my hours, so my, my minutes start after my seconds. Yeah. My minutes times 10 start after my minutes. My hours start after my minutes times 10, mm -hmm. and my hours times 10 start after my hours. Yes, so right. you, yeah, the, the progression of the time. Okay. Precisely, and if you look at my code, that's what this does. This offsets, it sets where each of those start. Okay. So, of course, the seconds are the first one. Right. But then the minutes start at 60, because the seconds get zero through 59. Mm -hmm. Then the, uh, the minutes times 10 gets 69 because it's 60 plus nine. Right. Because I have nine lights. That then the sense. next one is 75 because it's 69 plus six because mm -hmm. there's six lights mm -hmm. for the minutes times 10. Okay. And of course the hours times 10 are offset to 84. Okay. So this, if I was doing something different, let's say I had a whole string of WS2812s, I could yeah. still set exactly where in that string I want to start displaying seconds, Minutes, minutes times tens, right. hours, hours times ten. Right, because when we've done this projects, you've told us that it each LED grabs the data and then pu Passes pushes it on. It on. Yeah, so, right. okay. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, a few other things I, I have here. Max brightness, uh, and the reason I did this is because the the max brightness of 255 is, is actually really, really bright. I didn't want that. So it maxes <laughs> out at 150. You can set it for whatever you want. The minimum brightness is zero. So it's off. Right. Max brightness is 150, which is just over half. Yeah, and, and with this project too, it's kind of confined, so you don't want these heating up a lot. Precisely. So, yeah. yeah. And now here's the other thing. Um, remember, I like to define everything up top that I uh, that might change. Mm -hmm. I can choose what colors I want for my different values. So yeah. in this particular example, my seconds are purple. Uh, uh, ignore that second five color, that's that's for later on. Later, no, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, the minute color is gonna be green, the minutes <laughs> times 10 is red, the hour color is yellow, and the hour times 10 is blue. I could make these all the same color because they are in different parts. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, since they since are they have the ability yeah, of being different not? colors, might as well. Let's do that. Oh, uh, this part you've seen before, uh, this, is, this deals with the WS2812 array, so it's hooked up to data pin seven, um, and there are 86 LEDs in my string. That's okay. the 60 LEDs in the seconds. It's the two sets of nine for the minutes and the hour. And then it's the six and the two for the minutes times 10 and the hours times 10. All right. All right. Uh, I, you've seen this before. Global variables. My, these are my buttons. I've added a couple. And uh, you'll see what they do later on. I, brightness, so I can, I can set my brightness. My default is 30. Animation mode, that's something that we throw in at the end just for giggles. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's look at what's changed in our setup. Nothing, uh, except Not this. A, We've added the setup to, to turn on the WS2812 LEDs, mm -hmm. but everything else is the same. So finally, fast LED has been incorporated. It's been incorporated. All right, so this is the time functions. This allows us to get time from the you know, real-time clock. We've, we've already played with this. We know how it works. Oh, here's something new. Oh, LED there. time. So when I call the function LED time, we're going to get a little tricky here, Brian. Okay. So this is what's, this is what's going to happen. The first thing that's going to happen is it's going to call the um, 
uh, it's going to, sorry, it's going to create the variables, the, the memory space for seconds, minutes, hours, day of week, day of month, month and year. Then it's going to call the real-time clock and it's going to fill those values up with the values from the RTC. Huh. Okay. Then it's going to clear the, the array. I want to clear out any previous values from my LEDs because I don't want them to stay around. I want it to be removed so I can write what time it actually is. Now I have to do a series of uh, formulae in order to make it display properly. Mm -hmm. uh, so for my seconds, this one's actually pretty simple. And I, again, ignore the int five seconds. You don't actually need that for this I don't one. know what you're talking about. Yeah. For int fill, so the variable fill, right. equals zero, zero. From zero to the Less number of than... seconds that it is. Right. So if it's 10 and seconds, it's from zero to 10. Right, and then increment. Fill. And increment. And it just fills up that LED that, that array mm -hmm. with the color defined up top, uh, right. and defined the set color. So I set the set color to be purple, mm -hmm. which means go from, go from zero to as many seconds as there are and fill that ring with purple. Makes sense. Okay. Now let's go to minutes. Minutes is a little trickier because remember, I've got two separate LED sets for the minutes. I've got minutes and then minutes times 10. Okay. Because I, 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 I go from one to nine, or actually from zero, from no lights to nine. Right. And then the tenth, it adds a value to the tenth. Right, and then rotate it. Okay. Right. So what it does is the, uh, take, take whatever I took, I, whatever I read from the real-time clock, mm -hmm. and the min 10 value, so minutes times 10, is equal to Minute minutes divided, divided by, by 10. 10. Okay. okay. And that's, that's, there's no remainder. So if it's 53, it says 55. What if there was a remainder? Well, no, there isn't on this function. Okay. Because yeah. there was, I think, I went in my C++ class, we had to think about the remainder of yeah. dividing a digit, and it made my brain, it, brain hurt. hurts. Brain hurts. This one's, this one's actually fun, too. This is a mod. So my min value, so not, min, not minutes times 10, but that's the standard minute value, is minute mod 10. And remember, the mod, mod. function mm -hmm. is what's left. Mm -hmm. What's the remainder? Right. So let's say 53 again. If I do 53 mod 10, mm -hmm. it gives me 3. Right. Because that's... It's sub, yeah. There we go. Subtracting. Precisely. And then it, what it's going it's to run a for loop uh, uh, twice. First for the min 10 offset, for the, for the minutes times 10, and then for the minutes. Cool. And it's going to fill it with the minute 10 color and with the minute color. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. I do the same thing for the hours. Oh, so the hours, I'm going to do a divide by 10 and a mod 10. And this will allow me to fill up my LED with whatever it is that uh, needs to be filled up. Right. And that's it. So that's, that's going to take the, uh, cool. the real-time clock, and it's going to go ahead and push it to my LED ring. Now, let me start to upload that. Now, let's, let's take a look at what else we've changed here. Uh, mode set time, uh, we've, uh, we've added this in. This is the same function that we created to use the buttons, except now they're going to change what we see on the, uh, the LED. I see, I see, okay. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and upload. It's gonna take a while, it's gonna have to recompile the entire sketch because the variables have changed. Is this a pretty big file too? It's, it's not huge, not but bad. it's it's getting up there. Okay. Uh, and if we look at our loop, again, it's all it's doing is it's, it's waiting for that button push, and once that button push happens, it's gonna call mode set time. Hmm. Otherwise, it does LED time, and there we go. So if you look <laughs> into, over the overhead. Purdy. Yeah. That's so cool. Actually, let's increase the brightness a little bit. I'm glad you set that in. There you go. So what's happening now is it's just counting my seconds, and it will just keep going. And actually, let's, yeah, let's follow this all the way around the loop, and when it gets up to 60 seconds, it's going to add a value to minutes. Makes sense. And if we kept going, it would, uh, and it, it filled up all the minutes, it would add an hour to, or it would add a value to minutes times 10. Mm -hmm. If that fills up, it adds... A value and two when hours. And that fills up, it would, well, I guess it would go back to one. Right. right? Well, it, when zero. this fills up, it just goes to zero. So yeah, that it all sense. blanks out. Here we go. Wait. Let's see if the programming works properly. And wait. <gasps> huh? Boom. That, that's exactly and what we want to see. And begins again. And begins again. The circle of time. Now, Brian, this, this is nice, but there's something I don't like about it. Well, it's um, not the right time. It's not, well, yeah, first of all, it's not the right time. <laughs> the, the second thing here is, it's actually difficult to track the, uh, the, yeah. the seconds because they're all purple, right? That's true. I mean, I guess you could, 
you could say, if you divide it by axes, you could then say, okay, it's about 30 seconds, you know, 45 seconds, but it's not very easy to increment, uh, see it incrementally on right, there. Right, right. Well, you know what? You I'm have gonna, an idea for that? I'm going to take your advice, Brian. I think yeah. that's a great idea. It's totally my idea. I think idea. that's exactly what we should do. <laughs> so uh, we've got another example here. Looks exactly the same. Exactly the same. The only thing that we've changed is we've added a little bit of code on the uh, the LED time function, which, which is right here. Let's see. So what we're going to do is after it's gotten its value for seconds, mm -hmm. before it sends it off into filling the uh, the ring with yeah. the color purple, it will say for five seconds. So mod five. So right. on those values at which the remainder is zero when mm -hmm. it mods five. See, in other words, right there. So when there, yeah. when there is no remainder from dividing by five, which means so it is divisible it, by five. So it'll be five, 10, 15, 20. Precisely. Yeah. Then do not make it purple, but in fact, make it whatever color sec five color is, which I believe I set for yellow. Okay. Otherwise, cool. set the color for purple. Right. And I can make this anything. So I could do it mod three. If I, if I really wanted to mess myself up, I could count by threes. Okay. But what this will allow me to do is it will allow me to subdivide that ring. Mm -hmm. It will actually also make it look a lot prettier. Yeah, it will allow me to subdivide the ring so that if I'm just looking at it at a glance, mm -hmm. I, I, it makes it easier to find out how many seconds there are. Very cool. Let's okay, it's uploaded. Let's see it. it. Make sure it's going to the right. Oh, there we go. Uploading. And boop, boop, boop. I, I, I realize the, the boop, brightness boop, function is not boop, active yet. Boop. There we boop. go. If you can bring that down a little bit more, Alex. Oh, I, I really need the brightness function turned on right now. So you'll, you'll see this. No, no, it's, this is me. Uh, the problem is this is a bit too it bright. It still tonight. looks pretty, yeah. but yeah, there are yellow LEDs. They just blend on the camera. You can't quite tell. You'll see that when we get to uh, when I actually enable the brightness function. That's that's the next code example. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, how about that? But uh, this this is how the clock works. It's very cool. It reminds me of Simon Says. You remember that game? Like, I actually boop, thought boop, about because I have a little uh, Arduino part that I can put that turns this into a touch sensor, <laughs> and I was thinking about doing that. How about like if you push minutes, it changes the minutes. Yeah, and you push the hour, so yeah. you touch change the time. But then when I started looking at the wiring, I was like, it'd be a pain. It's a pain. I mean, look, if you look at this, the wiring, and remember this is the prototype, so it's ugly. But the the wiring is actually not bad. No, I, not it's at relatively all. neat. The first first version yeah. was a mess. Oh, was I it? I got so lazy. Well. I basically just daisy chained all the power leads off of each other. Yeah, and it was just big ball of cable inside. <laughs> well, you got to start somewhere. I like that you were able to do these little stands for yeah. that. Yeah, well, because cool. it, it snaps it in. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. Tight precision for a 3D printer. I know, right? That's what I love about it. <laughs> all right, we're going to get to the, the last example. So the last example is the full enabling of all the functions that you saw last week okay. when we first showed off the LED clock. That means we're going to be adding in the brightness controls. It also means we need we're going to be adding in the animation because, you know, sometimes you want your clock to look cool. Got to make it cool, especially if you're wearing it around your neck or something like that, right? Got to Make it battery powered. Yeah. <laughs> but before we do that, let's take a break for these messages. Previously on Twit. Took a picture of you. It says 54 year old man wearing a hat looking happy. I took six years off my age because I was wearing the hat sideways. Yes. <laughs> Tech News Today. Axios says Google, Apple, and Amazon have spent record amounts in lobbying this year. I think because there's so much uncertainty, I am guessing these companies feel like they have to protect themselves by getting as much opinion out there and as many people work in the system as possible. Well, CR1 in the chat room says, why lobby by politicians direct from Amazon? They sell everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All about Android. Did you guys hear yesterday was World Emoji Day? Very big deal. Also, we were reminded yesterday of a very sad fact. Once Android O comes to fruition, we'll be saying goodbye to those beautiful yellow blobs. Well, now we're getting these circular guys that look like everybody else's. So there goes our individualism. But I'm not bitter. I guess we'll be okay with it. Twit, the happiest place on earth. The sweat face emoji is going to completely change with the new emoji in Android O. Yeah. It's going to mean sickly, oh, wow. as I typically use it for being anxious or nervous, which is pretty much yeah. every minute of my life. <laughs> Especially when Jason's Especially not here. Especially when Jason's uh. not here. <laughs> and we are back. Okay, let's do the final push mm -hmm. 
full integration of all functions that we saw in the demo. All right. All right. Because we're going to need that brightness. We so did. We can yeah, actually show the seconds on it. Yeah, there. the problem is, even though it's got this diffuser on, it's, the LEDs are still too bright. And Just for these cameras. In person, it looks great. It looks great, yeah. All right, so here's what we did. Uh, we added a little something, something. Let's start with the brightness. So same code, but inside of our loop, we've added this brightness control. So if button one is not pushed, because remember, if button one is pushed, it goes off into the set time right. uh, uh, function. But if it's not pushed, it just keeps doing this loop. And the loop will say, check brightness control, then do LED time. So display okay. the time on the LED. Here's what brightness control does. Let's go up to the function for brightness control. Very short, super, super simple. Brightness control says, read digital pin two and read digital pin, or read button two and read button three. Mm -hmm. If button two is high, then brightness equals brightness plus 10. Mm -hmm. If button two is high, then brightness equals brightness minus 10. So if I hit button two. So you can go up or down. Increase brightness, right. Increase And button two, decrease brightness. OK. And actually, Alex, if you go over to the overhead, uh, I've uploaded this already. So, you, so if I do this, see, this makes it brighter, 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 brighter. And actually, I am now way too bright for the amount of power the Arduino can provide. But if I go the other way, what I can do is I can go all the way to off. So, and this is incrementing between 0 and 255? Uh, so, uh, remember, I set my maximum values at top, uh, right. 0 for minimum, mm -hmm. and 150 is for the, the max. highest. Right. Okay, okay. I could let that over, but uh, I would actually destroy Burn the out. Arduino. I would blow the Arduino. I'd be pulling so much power, I'd probably smoke something. Right. Uh, this won't be a problem in the finished, finished version because mm -hmm. I actually have a separate power regulator in there to give power just for the lights. Okay. And I like the idea, too, that you can increase or decrease the, I guess, how granular the brightness is. If you do, instead of 10, you did 25. Right. So there's fewer. And actually, here, Alex, if you go, if you go to the, bring the lights down now, I can put this at minimum. That's minimum brightness, and now you can see the the the, the gold or the yellow every five LEDs. Yeah, there you cool. can see. And then I increase it sharp like this, and now all you ah. see is bright. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Actually, that thing is really bright. Yeah, and again, that's it's going through three millimeters of diffusion material. So, if I didn't have that diffuser on, it would look kind of ouch. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. But there you have it. So that's the code behind our clock. Cool. There's, we're going to tweak this over the weeks because mm -hmm. uh, you know there's still a couple of things I'd like to clean up. Yeah, um, and I'm not a big fan of the purple, but maybe I'll change it well, around. Well, check this out. Okay, so you're not a big fan of the purple? Okay, Brian. We can, oh. we can. Oh. This, this is why we did all these definitions up top. I can reset all of my colors right now. So what color would you like the seconds to be? I would like it to be blue. Yeah, so those are blue. How about the five seconds? Orange is still okay, or you want another one? Uh, orange is fine. That's How cool. about for my minutes colors? Minutes, let's see. The green one, what's the minute set to right now? Green? Green. What's, uh, what, uh, it can yeah. stay green. I want it to look kind of like the Twit logo. So I want... Blue? Yeah. You want blue. So blue for, uh, for minutes times 10? Yes. Okay, there we go. So minutes times 10. And uh, hours times 10 is blue as well. So let's go ahead and upload this and let's see what, what I it is. want this it, to be red. If I did this properly, then it should just automatically change all the parts in the code base that set those colors <laughs> uh, and uploading. There we go. So when it freezes, it means the Arduino is receiving a new sketch. It's thinking. And uh, there we go. Yeah, I Super think blue looks simple, better. Right? Nice. There we go. But it's still going to, every five seconds, boom, a different color. Boom. Yep. But we could change that to purple if we wanted. Yeah. Now I did. I did happen to make one other little change in the what? code on this this particular sketch. What is it? Um, I figured. You know what? We've got code that we've already made to animate things like the LED goggles. So why don't we use it again? <laughs> yeah. Now uh, let's show you the different modes. So this is mode one. Mode one is. Ju uh, let's it's not just the a clock. There we go. Mode one j allows me just to display the time. Right. If I hit mode two, so I hit button one. It will give me this <laughs> rainbow, and the rainbow now means I can set my time. So this is hours. Ah, uh, cool. This <laughs> is minutes. I guess you don't really... Setting the seconds would be kind of silly, right? At 9, 10, <laughs> 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let's make it around there. And uh, again, if I hit mode 1 again, uh -huh. what will happen is it will go ahead and save it. Oh, actually, let's do this. 
Let's set that. And next one goes into the animation. Nice. So this is the animation function. It's just going to scroll up and down between the different animations that I have available for me. I kind of cool. like this one. Look at this. Oh, so pretty. Oh, look, right. I guess you could set it to if it hit a certain hour or something, like Ooh. it would do that pattern. I like that. So like yeah. at the change of every hour, it like animates itself for five seconds. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I can do that. I can make that change. I love that. That's a great idea, Brian. Okay, but when I go here, oh, it skipped. Oh, yeah, I missed it. <laughs> you were messing with the animation. You know what? Oh, we can we can redo that. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, change our minutes. Boop 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 boop. Ah! I probably want to decrease the amount of time it waits. Actually, no. You know, it, uh, it's, it's pretty good. It's, yeah. Because if you were actually trying to set the time, that would be a no frustrating. Yeah. Okay, and so we want nine. Boop boop. And go. Okay, so now when it gets to that 60 seconds, it should all the minutes should disappear and it should add an hour to the counter. Nice. Now it's we just have wild. to play the uh, waiting yeah, Unfortunately, game. I did not add a, fun a button to set seconds because that's stupid. Yeah, <laughs> that would be a little silly. You can just wait until you know the clock that you're judging the time by resets. Right, and the original version of this... Uh, actually, stay on the clock. It's going to switch over to Alex. On the original version... Yeah. Um, you would just hold one button and it would scroll one way and the second button would scroll the other way. But the problem is it took a really long time. Yeah. A yeah. super long time. It's like setting the time on that really bad clock in my car. It's so pretty. Uh, there we go. Wait, wait, wait. Oh Hold on. The tension, Padre, is building. It's, will it work? Will it explode? This could possibly detonate our nuclear arsenal. And <gasps> boom. There we go. So Boop. we know the code is working properly. Very cool. Okay. Uh, one last tidbit before we go. Let's let's actually show them the animation function. Uh, so we set that right here. So mode animation. Uh, if I push that button, so if I push button one mm -hmm. after it's uh, uh, w when it's already in the set time mode, yeah, it won't go straight back to just displaying the time. It will first drop into the animation mode. And all the animation mode does is it again while. Button one is high, so don't don't scroll past. Just sit there. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it reads buttons two and three to to scroll between animations. So I've got these all these different animations are in here, um, and I've got the fade to black. I've got the uh, this is the, the rainbow one. I've got the fill rainbow. Uh, these are all available for me to use, hmm. and I just scroll through them using the, the second two buttons. Okay, I like it. That's it. So what about it, Brian? You think uh, you think we got the code right? I think so. It's working properly, and uh, hey, it's a lot better than just having the serial too. Yeah, being right? able to display well, this. You kind of want something. Th th it's time for us to start creating stuff that people actually want to put on their desks. And yeah, in the cool. stand, this does look kind of cool. And by the way, the challenge still exists. So we told you last week because we sh we explained all the components that went into the clock and we showed you how we created the 3D files. Yeah. Those 3D files are available for, for your use on our show page. We want you to make your own base. The clock is pretty, it's pretty good the way it is. But we made a very standard base. It's just two poles holding up the, the sides of our LED clock. I've got some ideas, Padre. We want you to make something. In fact, I want to see people work in LEDs into the base. Like maybe add that to the animation so it yeah. shines up, right? I kind of want, I would be, uh, I want to do uh, the Twit logo and then maybe the base, maybe there would be a circular base where that does the seconds or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to design something. That's what I want to do. Possibilities, Brian. Possibilities. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got all of this code. You don't have to copy it down from the screen. We have ready copies of this code for you to download and, and yes. modify. Uh, it's all open source. It's all free. Take it and use it as you want. Or you can just screen grab yep. the, the, the show and, you, you, and try uh, and follow you along. You think the true fans... <laughs> no. Like stop, pause the screen. Pause it and, and copy it. Write it down in their yeah. notebook and then type it into the you computer. Are a bad person. That would That's be terrible. That'd be torture. <laughs> but you can find the code and you can also find the STL files uh, as well as the links to where you buy things like the the ring and the individual mm -hmm. WS one twos that went into the modules at our show notes. Which where do they find those, Brian? Well, they can find them at twit.tv slash kh. And if you have missed any episodes leading up to this and you're kind of lost, uh, don't worry because you can go through our backlog and download or subscribe to the show and you won't miss an episode. That's right. Also, don't forget that you can find us on the social, specifically 
at our Google Plus group. Just go to Plus and look for Know How. There's a very short approval process so we can keep out the spam accounts. But once you're in, you get access to over 11,000 Kitas. Those are the members of our community, our know-it-alls. They're going to help you find ideas for new projects. Maybe you can answer a couple of questions for them, and you can always put in your questions, your feedback, pictures, and videos of your projects. We try to show them here on Know How. That's right, and I have a feeling like with this kind of project, some people oh, yeah. are going to have different clock ideas that they're oh, yeah. going to want to do, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. Well, that's why we made it an open challenge. Yeah. Design, design this. I mean, again, the clock, yeah, you can modify it if you, if you really want to, mm -hmm. but the base, you can do so much with the base. I already, I thought about making the base like a little Iron Man arc reactor yeah. and, and lighting it up, but I, I want to see what you do. Yeah, and, it, and we'll have a contest, and whoever the winner is, we'll send you a know-how t-shirt because we don't actually have a know-how t-shirt, do we? <laughs> It'll just be a white t-shirt that is a I draw know-how. Know-how, signed by Brian and Padre. <laughs> it's incentive for us to get a t-shirt, right? Yeah, right? We should have a t-shirt. We t -shirt. should do that. We totally should. But right. that's not the only place to, to follow us. If, if you want to find out that we're getting t-shirts, the first place we're going to talk about it is probably on Twitter, mm -hmm. and I am at Cranky underscore Hippo. And you're going to find me at Padre SJ. And we've got a third member of our crew. Alex. Uh, yeah, no, no, Bryce. I call Bryce. him Bryce. Uh, Bryce is Good vital. Name. He's essential. And I've, I've known him all my life. I only heard him yawn like two or three times over there this time. So <laughs> he's playing, I can see it. That's he's, like, good. he's playing like Mario Run on his phone. Oh wait, no, he has a Microsoft phone. They don't have games. Ooh, burn! <laughs> Ouch! But you're gonna find Bryce <laughs> at Twitter. Turn your mic off, though. <laughs> he's got a bad power. <laughs> uh, Twitter.com/slash. <laughs> it's okay. He can't. He can't prevent the lower third. That's going to show up in power. Like, yeah. You can find. You can find Bryce right it's about. Going to be there. down here. Right <laughs> Until next also, time. Padre, it's pronounced Alex. Thank you. We'll yeah. get it right one of these days. One of these days. Until next time, I'm Father Robert Ballas here. And I'm Brian Burnett. And now that you know how, go build some time. Yeah. Wow.